Hello, welcome to the conversation here on New Central Television. This is the program where we bring you up to speed with all the political happenings on the continent of Africa. I am Benga Aborowa. And I am Rita Omodia. Lots of stories on the political scene around the African continent. And in Sudan, we have protests ongoing there with demonstrators saying that they would not go back until there's a civilian administration. And right now on the program today, we will be looking at the post-election period in Kenya. With the people anxiously waiting, the race is tight between Royla Odinga and William Ruto. More than 60 hours after citizens went to the polls to vote, Kenyans still do not know who their next president will be more than 48 hours after polls closed. Meanwhile, in West Africa, the Syria loaded president, Julius Mada Bio, has described anti-government protests in the country as acts of terrorism instigated by agitators living abroad. Those are very serious accusations coming from yes, the president. Yes, uh, interesting political developments in the east and west of Africa. Uh, I mean, Kenyans, everybody's waiting for the announcement. I mean, I'm even waiting. Results. Yeah, <laughs> and I wonder why it's taking so long. I guess we'll get into the details uh, when we speak to our guests. And also, Sierra Leone, the president had to cut short his vacation. Yeah. He was on holidays and, uh, I mean, you can be on holidays. Definitely can. And your country's burning, so he had to come back. And uh, we'll also looking at that and of course the protests that we've been reporting on uh, ever since we started the conversation <laughs> Sudan uh, never mean, ending protests these, th these yeah. people are one resilient people they have said no until they have mm. civilian administration I mean I, I really praise them yeah and I admire their resilience too. <laughs> all right so let's start with Kenya where two days after elections a winner of the Kenya presidential election is yet to be announced by the independent electoral and boundaries Commission with the people anxiously waiting, the IEBC has neither released a running tally of results nor said when it plans to announce the winner. But unofficial and sometimes conflicting media accounts show a nail-bitingly close race. Veteran opposition leader and former political prisoner Rilo Odinga, aged 77, is making his fifth stab at the presidency. He stands neck and neck with outgoing Deputy President William Ruto, aged 55. Meanwhile, four Africa-based election observer groups in the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, have largely commended Kenyans for observing peace during the elections. Now, joining us to discuss all of this and more uh, is Gakuma Njima Castro, political act scientist and a candidate of member of parliament for Othaya in Yeri County. We also have uh, journalist uh, Nick Gital. He joins us from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Uh, gentlemen, glad to have you both on the conversation. One welcome to you. Thank you very much, Benga. Uh, happy to be here. Now, it's been two days of waiting, yet no official result. Today will make it the third day. Uh, how, what's the mood like in Kenya? And uh, what is responsible uh, for this delay that we're witnessing from the IEBC? Why have the results not been announced? Uh, that question is directed to Nick. Um, I think, first of all, I think uh, the IBC is taking its time, majorly because the processes are actually contrasting from the previous election to this. Um, they have to take their time to make sure that they are giving the Kenyans, first of all, the will of the people. So it doesn't matter how long it takes. And I think uh, Kenyans are not really complaining much about uh, or rather how long it's taking, but that we the anxiety is killing us to make sure that we, we just need to know who, who won. So I think the process, process, especially from what the forms look like, the tallying of the votes, and also the verification of the, of the same votes um, is what's taking time. But then we are coding IBC the same, same grace to make sure that they are giving us, by the time they're announcing the results, they're giving us the, cre the, the credible results that uh, reflects the will of the people. Okay, Gakuma Nick says the terms of the, co the conditions of the elections are different, but the election commission chairman Wafula Chebukati has blamed party agents for the slow pace of the official count. Now, Gakuma, how true is this, and uh, how exactly is the mood in Kenya? Okay, I believe we lost Gakuma. So, All right. um, yes. Okay, Nick. Nick so let, let's have you react to this. Um. I think majorly the party agents cannot really be uh, at the helm of why it's taking long. If that's, if I got the question correctly. Yes, that's what uh, Chebukati said. 
Um, I would say in terms of in in terms of just the agents themselves, I know majorly one of the areas is because they're interfering, especially today, there was also a, a bit of a scaffold at the Bomas of Kenya, which is the headquarters of the IBC on where mm -hmm. the president is going to be announced. There's just a bit of the scaffold, scaffold where they, the agents really want to verify the exact numbers that are being tallied or are being verified or are being transmitted to the IBC. So that might be, uh, might, uh, be the area where it's causing uh, a lot of the delay, which has actually been seen today um, at the IABC and the Bomos of Kenya. So that might only be the place, but then IABC is definitely working independently to make sure that uh, they transmit or they verify towards uh, and also transmit the election results uh, very well. Now, Nick, uh, still talking about transmission of election results in the IABC, uh, yesterday, Mr. Chibukati did uh, slam the media. He said they're causing a lot of confusion there. And they're this, you know, different TV stations and different media outlets are reporting different results. Uh, according to the laws of the Republic of Kenya, who is responsible for making the final announcement of results? And uh, what does the law say on TV stations and other media organizations uh, reporting election results? And where are they get in this uh this figures from um i think i'll start with the last question where is where are they getting these figures from is that we've seen as opposed to just the previous elections we've seen that the media and also the parties have also been given a certain kind of freedom uh, towards also doing their provisional results so you find that um the media stations are running or rather are running uh, parallel uh, tally centers, uh, mm -hmm. such as the Citizen TV is, is running their parallel uh, tally centers to make sure that they're also verifying the same results. So there's a certain kind of freedom that has been given to okay. the media okay. and to the public. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. go on, please. Go on, go on, please. Yes. Um, so there's a certain kind of freedom that has been given to the media, to the party agents, and also to the public in itself, because we ourselves, as uh, or rather the public in itself can also download the forms and verify the same results uh, that will be announced, whether at, the, um, whether at the constituency level and also at the presidential level. So there is a certain kind of freedom, which is pretty much the change uh, as opposed to the other previous elections. So the, the institution that is mandated within the constitution to make sure or rather to announce the results is the IEBC. So the actually and that's why you're seeing why they've been shut down at this point they they've been told not to air the national level especially where the presidents are concerned yes. but to only air the constituency um results as it were but not the presidential results because again it's bringing a lot of confusions exactly. there might be mm -hmm. there might be a lot of bias um going around or again there might be just no concurrency between what IBC has and what they have. So that's pretty much where the confusion is coming in. And talking about this confusion, Nick, uh, late on Thursday it was reported that the chairman of Kenyatta's Jubilee Party uh, issued a statement alleging massive subtle rigging and claiming the electoral process was highly compromised. Now, I want to first of all verify how true this statement was coming from Kenyatta's Jubilee Party chairman and also what you make of these allegations. Um... I think the compromise was really coming from saying that the, the systems have been hacked, um, which again, the IBC has replied today and said there hasn't been any compromise and they've worked um, hard to make sure that there is no compromise at all. So the IBC has not also released any viable statements in regards to any compromise. There were, there were a few situations that uh, Mr. Chebukati also highlighted, especially where um, to, or rather the boxes coming in are not sealed or something like that, which are minor and also there, I believe they're also handling it. Uh, they haven't released any statement as uh, on that after that. But then in regards to the system, there hasn't been, or rather they, they've also cleared that and make sure, or rather they've clarified and said there hasn't been any form of rigging or system hack within their, within their process. Thank you, Nick. I'd like to bring in uh, Gakuma Castro. Now, Gakuma, uh, before the elections, we saw campaigns. We saw how young people, 
how Kenyans on Twitter were very so much into uh, the elections. And election day came and the figures we saw were quite disappointing in terms of low voter turnout from this, uh, fr from, from young Kenyans. What do you think was responsible for this? Thank you very much. Sorry for the late intruding. And then my network has been with a lot of failures. But uh, during the campaigning period, we had so many people into campaign. Hello, Kakuma, are you there? Okay, uh, Kakuma complained about his network issues, I guess. I would like to direct uh, that question. Okay. Around the country, seeing around the voting. But the anticipated uh, voter turnout was very low because it was about 30% uh, in certain counties. And the county that had a majority of the voter turnout is Nairobi, which had allowed 60%. Uh, but there was no political motivation that made people to get in or to come out to vote during this period because uh, as in... Do you think young people been, are perhaps disappointed in the political class? Uh, that's why they decided not to turn out. Exactly, exactly. So many Kenyans have been disappointed by the political class because their expectation or the expectation of Kenyans that these Kenyans has put to the political class, they have failed. Because so many people have not fulfilled their uh, mandate or they have not fulfilled their agendas that promised to the, Ke the Kenyans. And therefore, so many people never came out to vote. Although the young people we are in during the campaigns and they, we are they, the people who had so much bravados around. And they are the people actually who never came out to vote because much of the young people would hang out in the streets and young, young people actually during the voter registration, they were not there. They actually did not come out to vote or to register, rather to register to as voters. Mm. So that's why we had an apathy uh, during this the crisis. Of, uh, okay, Gakuma, aside the voting process, I'm going to throw the question that we once yeah. asked Nick um, Gakuma. And with this is concerned, this result of the elections. Now, do you feel that the IEBC has been slow to deliver the results of the elections? Or according to Nick, would you say that they're just taking their time? Hello? Yes, come again. Gakuma, I said, uh, what do you think about the election results? Do you think the IEBC is taking too much time? Or do you think they're just doing due diligence? Okay, the IBC is the body responsible for relaying the results, both the presidential results, and also confirming and verifying every form or every vote, vote that is coming from the constituency level. So at this time, we are they are still working on the timeline, as I have the chairman of the IBC saying it, that they are relaying and they be on their timeline to relay the results as soon as possible. But at this level, we are getting to know that um, around 70% has been done, around 70% of the form that is 4B has already been verified, that has already been uh, given out to the people and already been de de declared. So we are getting the, we are going to have the 30% uh, forms that have not been uh, relayed because there are various uh, county turning centers, they haven't uh taken the or they haven't sent the uh, form that the four b's and that's the forms that they are being written by the national turning at the national turning center so we expect that in due time that we shall be having the president uh announced and uh kenya will have a new president later by maybe if a uh, little by monday we shall have uh, a new president uh announced but okay so far i think IBC should have their time to do due diligence and to make sure that every form or every vote that has been casted has been counted. Thank you very much, Gakuma. I'd like to uh, direct this question to Nick. Now, Nick, talking about the IEBC, the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission, uh, they had five years to prepare for this election. So well, under five years, how would you rate the performance uh, at this general elections? Uh, looking at the complaints people had about uh, the uh, Kim system and also low voter education, because a lot of these electoral officials did not know the next step to take. 
and uh, some people were disenfranchised because they weren't referred to the manual register. So just looking at the generality of the elections, the conduct and uh, what has happened so far, how would you rate the performance of the IEBC? And do you, do you sense a marked improvement uh, since the last outing? Um, well, first of all, this is also uh, an opportunity to actually say I was a polling clerk um, oh, in the last election. Um, and so contrasting between the last election and this one, definitely there's a very huge um, improvement in how they've been able to facilitate this election process, not just with, within regard, uh, not just with tallying and counting, but also from sensitizing the, uh, the voters I know specifically, and just as Castro, one of, one of the questions you asked Castro is that uh, we're seeing a low voter turnout. Um, and I think one of the reasons is that um, it's also on awareness. So a lot of the population uh, that we're seeing disengaged is actually the youth. And the reason they're disengaged is because they don't know why mm. it's also a duty for them to, um, to actually vote. So, um, or rather they haven't understood um, their civic engagement where it comes to national matters and uh, political matters. So that's where the disparity is coming in. Whose However, responsibility I, is it to educate this uh, youth on their civic matters? The IBC is also is also very hugely um, uh, supposed to actually um, educate the voters and raise awareness on how to vote. They have done that. However, they should improve their efforts continuously. However, if, uh, if I'm talking about the system, the system has been really, really um, effective and efficient. I have, I have seen uh, a lot of feedback nationally where, even on social media, where people are just saying, it only took me five minutes to vote, it only took me 10 minutes to vote, as opposed to the previous election, where a lot, um, there was a very, very huge line, and it took you two, about two hours to get to probably get to your polling station, or something like that. So there has been a very massive um, improvement. And that doesn't also dismiss the fact that much as there is a, vol a low voter turnout, doesn't mean that it will have uh, been tedious for voters. I think the whole system and the whole process has been very, very effective and efficient. They definitely has, they have room to improve, especially where awareness is concerned, because now you're dealing with the youth. Uh, and also number, and number two is also the tallying and counting now it doesn't matter the constitution has allowed for seven days to be able to deliver the presidential results it doesn't have to take seven days it can actually be minimized with the processes especially now that they are digitized then they can minimize the the time allocated or rather they can minimize the time to, uh, taken to actually release the presidential election and that will help voters to also um probably just reduce the tension and anxiety yes. that Kenyans are facing right now. Okay, Gakuma, looking at the election process, uh, we talked about security issues, and one major issue was the fact that uh, incumbent MP Didmos Barasa was reportedly on the run after he was alleged to have shot and killed Brian Olunga. Now he has actually surrendered to the police and he has been declared winner. So how do you take this situation and what happens next? Uh, I would say it's very unfortunate, actually, and my sympathies to the family that lost their loved one. Actually, the person who was shot was a youth. And two days, Didmas Balaza has been unseen. He was nowhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. And today, he gave out himself to the police and for investigation and interrogation. And the police uh, who gave out the statement said that Didmas Balaza was writing the statement so that they can start up or they can... I continue with the investigation on how that young person lost his life. So it's very unfortunate that when such a leader uh, is getting all is again is facing uh, charges about murder, that is also receiving a certificate uh, on the qualification. Although people had elected him, it was on the process uh, of election that this uh, issue lays double happened. So we are expecting that the law will take its course and uh, the due diligence will be done on the course of the death of the young person. So we're expecting that the police will speed up this process of investigation and the matter to be taken onto uh, record 
so that if at all he was the person who was involved in it, he should face the charges and the law should take its course. It is very unfortunate and very uncouth. Now with this, how would you rate the security presence during the elections? Uh, let me say that the president or the outgoing president has done uh, a lot of work, especially when it's come to security issues, both the internal security and external security. Because so far so good, the country is at still and it's very calm, the security areas that have been uh, 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 spotted as hotspots, uh, security has been beefed up, and we're expecting that uh, security will be maintained until the last uh, minute when the election will be uh, declared. Uh, during the campaigns, we did not have so many issues about insecurity, and uh, also during the election day, security was there, and people maintained calm, the police were very, very calm and friendly to the people because people went to the polling stations, they voted and went back to the, their places. And even today, as we are waiting for the president-elect to be announced, people are, has gone back to their duties, their normal duties, and we're expecting that this will maintain until we have the transition of the next government. Thank you, Gokuma. Um, I would like to direct the next question uh, to Nick. To Nick, yeah, Nick, the chairman of uh, IBC Chebukati encouraged candidates who have lost the elections to concede. Uh, now we're waiting for the big announcement, the big announcement by IBC for the winner of the presidential elections. Uh, we remember what happened in 2007, and the memory still. Uh, fresh in the minds of uh, many Africans and also uh, Kenyans. Do you think this time around, once the result is announced, uh, it will pass with no incident? Uh, do we have any guarantees that uh, there will be no uh, post-election violence once the results are announced? From feelers on the ground. And even the ones see? that have been announced, uh, what exactly have been the reactions there? Mm. I mean, we've seen a lot of um, aspirants, or rather the people who've lost, really conceding. Um, one of them being Moses Kuria, who was running for governor uh, in Kembo County. We've seen um, Kabando Akabando um, also conceding uh, defeats, uh, who was running for Senator Nyeri. Uh, we've seen Nick, Nixon Korir, who was, uh, who was running for MP Langata, conceding defeat as well. So we've seen a lot of um, leaders who've stepped up and said your this was done fairly um it was done fairly it also the results re um, reflect the will of the people and it didn't just go to my favor and so um I, I i concede and that's that has been such a positive feedback seeing mm -hmm. that uh we actually a democratic nation so at the presidential level uh both parties or rather all four uh, all four aspirants um, have also expressed the fact that they would um, they would agree to the will of the people and they will support what the IEBC says. And so now it's now uh, where they get to put action to what they said yeah. previously. So I wouldn't say that uh, this is what would happen, but then this is again what we really hope uh, will will but happen. And even at this point within the terrain, of what's happening. Um, I see both of them much as they are anticipating a win because of the very, very um, small and marginal um, gap. Um, then they're they are still saying we will still uh, concede defeats. And so we are really anticipating for that as well. So, so Nick, Gakuma said there's no tension on the ground. What are people, I know there's a lot of anxiety, but are people on the edge? Are they angry? What's, what's the mood like? Um, again, uh, it really reflects the fairness of IABC at this point, um, that they've really conducted this election very smoothly. And also Kenyans in themselves have, have been, um, or rather are looking at this more pragmatically and saying, uh, number one, leaders are, some of the leaders are really there for their self-interest. Mm -hmm. And now this is, and we are better, we are better than this. We are better than, um, tribal lines we are better actually 
one of the positive things is that this election is not even based on tribal, but also just really based on the manifestos and what people are bringing on board. So Kenyans are very pragmatic when it comes uh, in this election when it comes to how they're handling issues. And so that now the what what Kenyans are talking collectively about is the anxiety of who is going to win, who is going to carry the day. And so whoever just runs or whoever just um, is elected, then we will just go with that saying that it reflects the majority, uh, the will of the people uh, in the majority level. So it's definitely a calm environment and we're seeing peace all through. Some people have also opened back their businesses um, and matters, it hasn't gone back to full norm normalcy. We know immediately after it has been announced, there will be celebrations, there will be mm. uh, a small remorse with the people who've lost, but then uh, we definitely trust um, that it's going to be, it's going to come back to normalcy uh, just immediately. Yeah. Okay. All right, Gakuma, as much as Nick is saying that there's peace and people have gone back to their normal affairs, with the results that we've seen so far, we see Royal Odinga and William Ruto and neck to neck at the points of the results. And we also have the issue of the BBI, which came out because if you look at it, it's still, it will still seem that uh, Royal Odinga and William Ruto have a lot of supporters. So, Gakuma, do you believe in a shared governance or do you feel that the winner should just take it all? First of all, I should say that I was also a candidate for the Udaya parliamentary seat. So, Gakuma, are you still with us? Uh, I wish Gakuma was there. I was going to ask him if he won his election. Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> okay, um, let's hear from Nick then. Um, would you kindly repeat the question, please? Okay, I said with the results in so far, it seems like William Ruto and Raila Odinga both have large supporters uh, from the people of Kenya. And this brought about the issue of BBI in previous elections, if we look at the handshake between Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. So do you believe in a shared governance or do you believe that the winner should just take it all? Um, well... I think, first of all, I'd, I'd just like to express the fact that these are two people who are opposites. So uh, Raila Odinga was championing for the BBI, uh, whereas Ruto was actually um, very against the BBI. And so um, we are seeing a space where, uh, and Ruto has also come come out clean and said that he's not he's not looking to um, to share governance. So I don't think there is going to be an opportunity where um, a shared governance will be a point of conversation unless um, there is a lot of um, uh, people, especially with uh, voters and the citizens, that calls towards deliberations or certain things like that. However, since, again, I've said Kenyans are very pragma pragmatic with how they're looking at the election at this point, which means whoever takes it actually takes it all uh, with no shared governance. Now, Nick, finally, before we let you go, I mean, this is the third day since uh, the elections began. So we're getting closer to when results will be announced. Can we bank on getting the results anytime soon? Today is Friday. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, trust me, we are, we are getting the hits on this, <laughs> especially with the anxiety that comes with it. However, again, as I said, um, IBC is doing their due diligence. Um, mm. When we're looking at, actually, the good thing about this is it's, they are very transparent on their portal. They, we are seeing how far they are. We are seeing what, uh, what they're actually doing at this point because now they are verifying the Form 34Bs, which are coming from the constituency level. So they are verifying that that will transform to that Form 34C and now Form 34D, which will be used to announce the president, uh, the president elect. So okay. they have they have till Monday. They um they have till Monday to do this. So we're anticipating between um today probably uh it's still early or early on in the evening or mm -hmm. tomorrow um or Monday, then they're able to announce but then constitutionally they have till Monday to get to do this. So we are hoping to get it as fast as possible as Mr. Chabukati also um assured us yes. i don't mean to play the devil's advocate but what happens if uh, the result is not announced on monday um there's a constitutional process for it which i'm not very acquainted about however 
with with what you are seeing right now, there is there are very very minimal chances to actually getting there. I think, in my own opinion, I hope they get to announce it tomorrow because they are not very far off. They've today actually, uh, Mr. Chebukati also amped up the the amount of personnel that they had. Uh, they have on the floor at Bomas of Kenya who are verifying the form 34Bs. They've uh, they've gotten to around seven tables, um, which who are be, who are fast pacing the process. So I think they're mitigating the pro, uh, they are mitigating all delays before they actually occur, as opposed to actually having um, an overall cure of um, of the process in itself. So I hope that they're able to fast track the process and probably just work within this time frame and I, I mean hopefully okay uh, and this is just me saying hopefully you get to release it tomorrow hopefully. now nick uh campaigns done elections done this candidate's made uh, quite a lot of promises looking at the present uh, global and economic realities in in, in yeah. kenya uh what kind of country will the new president uh, be inheriting and uh, what are the biggest expectations uh, among Kenyans as they went to vote? What do they want? Um, number one, which actually has really contributed to the low voter turnout is the current um, inflation. So the standard of living is very, very high at this point. Um, you're looking at flour prices, we're looking at um, cooking oil, just at the basic level, the basic needs of the Kenyan or of a Kenyan are very, very high. So uh, one of the promises from from all parties is in terms of the economy and making sure that Kenya rises in its economic growth. Um, also, employment with the youth, who largely are the the greatest uh, or rather the the majority in population. So employment of the youth, um, the economy growing, those are the specific aspects, and just not just um, growing. Um, I don't know in any other particular way, but also in terms of sector. There are certain sectors such as the creative sector, the creative economy, which have not, um, which yield a lot, which have a potential to yield a lot and haven't actually been taken um, on a keen um, precedence with the government. So we are looking at economic growth, uh, the unemployment rate to also reduce um, and pretty much having, a, how can I say it? Policies that work mm. for the mm. citizens. Policies yeah. that work. So I think, yes, those are the three areas that I would say um, Kenyans are very, very keen on at this point. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nick uh, Gitao, for joining us, and also Gakuma Gastri for joining us on this conversation. We're waiting and hoping that very soon the results will be announced. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Nick. You're watching the conversation on New Central Television. Uh, we just finished the first half of the program. And in the second half of the program, we will be going to Sierra Leone, where dozens have died in anti-government protests. Uh, police and all the sources said on Thursday, sharply raising the death toll from the previous day's classes as shocked citizens. Uh, President Julius Madabio has called shot his vacation and is back in the capital, Freetown. We'll be looking at this in details, the course of this and the government's response and a much more. Do stay with us. It's a conversation on New Central Television. We'll be right back after this break. You welcome back to the conversation. We now turn our attention to Sierra Leone, where dozens have died in anti-government protest in the country. Police and all the sources said on Thursday, sharply raising the death toll from the previous day clashes as shocked citizens and most stayed behind closed doors in the capital, Freetown. Six police officers and at least 21 civilians were killed, the sources said, as hundreds took to the streets in frustration at economic hardship and the perceived failure by the government to cushion the impact of rising prices. Now, joining us for this conversation, we have Abdul Malik Bangura, a journalist. Thank you so much for joining us on the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me once more. All right, Abdul Malik, uh, discontent has been boiling over in Sierra Leone over a number of reasons, including a perceived lack of government support to people who are struggling with high commodity prices. 
Now, can you tell us more about why these demonstrations have taken place? Um, like I've always been reporting, like the one of there is no uniform reasons as to the cause of this protest. Um, like I told you, in Makeni, they were protesting for lack of funda for lack of protection of fundamental human rights. Why is in Freetown people are protesting for hardship and all? The number of dead, as you rightfully mentioned, stands at 27 with the six police officers and 21 civilians. But um, the most interesting thing today that has happened in, in the country is that overnight, you know, we now have a curfew between 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Overnight, um, people alleged that um, some police officers flung the market square in the CBD we are petty traders do sell their goods, destroy all the makeshift structures that we are set up in that particular part of um, the city. They've destroyed all of them this morning. And that was why like, even this afternoon, there was also skirmishes in the central business district between market women or petty traders and the police officers. As we are now here in Freetown, it is fastly approaching um, 5 p.m. A lot of um, of uh, a lot of um, um, of sentences are on, and the entire society is on is on tenter hooks because even the president is due to uh, to address the nation at um, 8 p.m., which is 9 p.m. Abuja time. So we are facing a lot of difficulty today. Yesterday was quite calm, but until the police officers attacked, uh, let me say, laid, um, strong the market, market. Um, place where women do sell their petty trade and others. They destroy all the makes makeshift structures there, and that has caused another row today in the capital city. Now, Abdul Malik, I understand President Julius Matapia who cut short his vacation to return to Freetown. Uh, and you did say they will be addressing the nation 8 p.m. Freetown time. Has he released any statements uh, with regards to the situation in the country? And uh, do you see this curfew extending? Now, the, the, the curfew has been modified. The, the curfew has been modified. Initially, we had a nationwide curfew, but just last night, the curfew was modified. In the east of the country, where we have, unlike in Nigeria, to start with, where your country is divided into states, for us in Sierra Leone, our country is divided into districts. In the eastern region of the country, we have three districts, which are Kono, Kainlaou, and Kenema districts. Those are stronghold of the ruling SLPP. There is no curfew there. In the southern region, we have four districts. We are we have Bo, Bond, Moyamba, and Pujeon districts. There is no curfew. In the northeastern region, we have four districts: in Bombali, in Tonkolili, in Koinadugu, and in Falaba districts. In Koinadugu and Falaba, there is no curfew, mm -hmm. but there is a curfew in Bombali district. We are we have um Makeni City, which is the Northern Regional Headquarters. And there is also a curfew in Maboka Town, which is the which is the district headquarter town for Tonkolili District. In the northwestern region, we only have curfew in Karena District, which is in Kamakue Town, as you guys have been reporting. But in Potsloko District and in Cambia District. There is no curfew. In the western region, we have two districts, which is Freetown, Western Urban, and the Western Rural District, where we have places like Quatalo and the rest. And in fact, that's, that, that is where I stay. Okay. There is a curfew in both. All right, Abdul Malik, I am very grateful that you were able to establish all the different sides where there is curfew and where there is no curfew. Now, in recent allegations, we see the presidency saying that these protests have been sponsored by uh, politicians opposed to him and even those living in diaspora. Now, what facts do we have about this situation? Okay. 
The first problem we have here in Sierra Leone, initially, there were people who were calling for peaceful protest. What happened about a month or two ago, if you guys can follow the, the trend, there was a time when two opposition officers or officials were arrested for allegedly calling for a protest. So, and this particular protest now, there is no brain behind it. It's like people in the diaspora sending voice notes on social media, calling for their people to come out and demonstrate against the government. But there is no ring leader that there is no there is no party there is no union there is no structure in place that is organizing this protest it's like people mobilizing themselves and coming out so that's why even the president as he was saying yesterday back to your question benga when he was on bbc he made mention of terrorists mm. say it was a terror attack and even some opposition some ruling party objectives were saying that People attacked a democratically elected president just to, to remove him out of power because the president was not in town. But the opposition had vehemently come out and said that they are not in support of this protest. They sympathize with the, for the loss of life and call on all opposition supporters to remain calm and peaceful citizens. That is a message that has been sent out by the ruling, by the main opposition, All People's Congress Party, in their statement released yesterday, it was also a concern that was raised by the National Grand Coalition Party, which also has four members of parliament. It was also a similar message sent out by the Coalition for Change Political Party, which has eight members of parliament in, in Sierra Leone. But the funny thing in our parliament okay. is that the main opposition has the largest seat in parliament. Now, quickly, so Abdul Malik, before we begin to wrap things up, if you can, in less than a minute, I would appreciate. Uh, you did say that the president, uh, Julius Matabio, will address the nation at 8 p.m. Freetown uh, time today. Uh, do you think as part of his address he will, because, I mean, yesterday he sounded very angry talking to uh, the press, uh, naming, calling demonstrators terrorists and what have you. Do you think he might perhaps... Uh, reel out plans that, uh, and plans and programs for what the government is trying to do to assuage the difficulties of ordinary civil owners uh, in response to rising prices of commodities. Well, for for the various quarters, the, from, for the opposition quarters, they don't see any new message coming out from the president. They believe it is basically going to be the same angry tune referring to them as terrorists and the likes. For the ruling party operatives and even the ruling party supporters, they themselves are very angry. It's like we are living in a society where everyone is angry. They are very angry against the opposition, saying that, oh, because Sierra Leone is regionally divided, there was a time the Northwest was ruling, we gave them time, now the Southeast is ruling. We don't want to allow them to rule. So the Southeasterners are very unhappy. Why is the Northwesterners also are very unhappy? So it's we are, some of us that are uh, level-minded, are expecting the president to come out with a very much more cooler message to pacify situation. But the opposition are not expecting anything, anything other than them being referred to as terrorists again. Thank you very much, level-minded Abdul Malik Bangura, for taking time out uh, to join <laughs> us to discuss uh, the situation in Sierra Leone. Uh, we do appreciate <laughs> your insight and contribution to the program. Thank you. Okay, this is where we draw the curtains in today's edition of the conversation. In the first half, we looked at, at the Kenya elections as we await the final result of the presidential contest, and we just concluded our conversation on the recent riot in Freetown in Sierra Leone. Um, Benga Aburua, thanks for being a part of the program. And I'm Rita Omodia. See you next week. Bye-bye.